Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Arnie Gunderson to the show today. He has been doing tons of video communication, explaining what is going on in the Fukushima plants what the conditions are that are happening around the world, explaining about radiation. He is known as being a whistleblower in the nuclear industry. He is a former senior vice president for a nuclear company. He has been an expert witness for the Three Mile Island incident and another one called St. Lucie, which he will tell you about. He's been 35 years in the nuclear industry. He was also a licensed reactor operator. He has much to teach us and to explain to us what he's been doing since the reactors exploded in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Arnie Gunderson to It's Rainmaking Time. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, we really appreciate it. You've been all over the news. You've been with Deepak Chopra. You've been on different stations, but your videos are very helpful. I first want to talk to you about who you are. You appear to have sprung up out of nowhere, but I guess the nuclear industry knows about you. Talk to us about your background and where is this knowledge coming from that you know what you know? Yeah, I've been, um, uh, I'm 62, so I've been around a while. Not quite older than dirt, but getting there. And <laughs> I, uh, um, I started, um, I went to college at Rensselaer and I got a bachelor's and a master's there first in my class and stuff like that, Atomic Energy Commission scholar. And I, uh, um, I got a reactor operator's license and, um, and then went into industry. And I worked, um, my first reactor I, I ever worked on was um, Millstone 1, which is identical to Fukushima 1. And uh, then I, my, um, I met Maggie, my wife, on a, well, I was the lead nuclear engineer on a... Uh, on a project in upstate New York. Um, and then we moved and raised our family in Connecticut, um, where I was a senior vice president of a, of a nuclear company over in Connecticut. So uh, in that capacity, I, uh, I built nuclear fuel racks. From the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for a, uh, um, a BWR exactly like Fukushima. And... Um, um, I've been at about 70 reactors around the country. So in 1990, I um, blew the whistle on the, the company I worked for. I didn't really plan on blowing the whistle. I found some violations and told the president about it, the president of the company, and, uh, and he fired me. And then I went to the NRC, and I told them about the violations, and they came in and did an inspection and uh, couldn't find anything. And um, so then I knew I was right, and I went to uh, Senator John Glenn and my my local congressperson and uh, got them to get the inspector general involved. And the inspector general found everything that I had said was true. There was all the violations were there and that the NRC had knowingly botched the inspection and uh, also that the NRC inspectors, Nuclear Regulatory Commission inspectors, were uh, taking illegal gratuities from the company I worked for. So um, we were sued. My wife Maggie and I were sued for a million and a half dollars because uh, they claimed that we were defaming their character. And uh, that drove us into bankruptcy and foreclosure. And ultimately, we reached an out-of-court settlement in the... 1996. Now, when you say you reached an out-of-court settlement, you mean they had to pay you or you had to pay them? Ah, yes. They paid us some, but it didn't match our losses. And They basically said, um, we will continue to fight for another five years or you will settle. And so at that point, after six years in the house in foreclosure and all that, we settled. So I moved on with my life. And uh, during during the 90s, I was an expert witness uh, on Three Mile Island, on a, a case in Texas where uh, some oil workers were exposed to neutron uh, radiation. And uh, throughout the 2000s, I was uh, an expert witness on several trials, including one at St. Lucie where uh, there's a cancer cluster of 39 um, kids that have uh, cancer. Um, and then in 19, 
2007, uh, no, I'm sorry, in 2007, Maggie had started the company Fairwinds, and uh, um, and I was um, I went on full time in 2007, and I got appointed to the oversight committee here in Vermont on Vermont Yankee, and I discovered that the decommissioning fund was short. I predicted ahead of time the cooling towers were going to collapse, and they did. And then I discovered the fact that there really were underground pipes that the executives had been lying about. And um, um, then just in 2010, we had the underground pipes begin to leak here in Vermont. And that resulted in uh, um, Vermont Yankee being rejected by the state of Vermont for a 20-year license extension. So that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, you know, um, I, for the first 20 years of my life, I, I believed that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission was a tough cop. And for the second 20 years of my professional career, I know that they're not a tough cop. And uh, uh, while from a media standpoint, I probably have just risen to, uh, to radar. But uh, in fact, the NRC has known about me for 20 years, and I've been consistently pushing them to do the job we're hiring them to do. I feel for you when I hear you speak about what you've been through. In all of your videos, you seem to have a calm poise, a clarity that you transmit in explaining to us what's going on. There was a time when I guess I wasn't as calm or as poised. <laughs> I'm uh, sure. There, there was a time in the early 90s when uh, when I was angry and... Uh, um, and um, Angry at the industry, angry at the Nuclear um, Regulatory Commission. And, uh, you know, when life gives you lemons, you turn them into lemonade. And, and, uh, and now I've, I've just, I feel very comfortable and at ease um, um, talking about the, the unregulated side or the underregulated side of nuclear power and the risk it, it, uh, it, it applies to every citizen in the country. Because we are in the United States having this conversation, do you happen to know offhand how many nuclear reactors there are in the U.S. right now? Uh, power reactors, there's 104. 23 of them are essentially identical to Fukushima. So really, everybody needs to be listening very carefully. Anyway, that's still a lot of nuclear reactors. But before we go into... A lot of what you've talked about in the video, even your current video yesterday, April 18th, I want to talk to you about Indian Point and Vermont, and I want you to explain what's happening there and what's in process. Well, there, there are two separate uh, reactors and two separate designs. Uh, both of them are owned by a company called Entergy, which is a, a large nuclear holding company. They own 11 nuclear reactors. Um, let's start with Vermont Yankee, which is here in Vermont. It was built in 1972, and its license expires in 2012, 40 years later. And the um, Nuclear Regulatory Commission has um, just, just a week after Fukushima, granted a 20-year license extension, despite the fact that it's the identical reactor to Fukushima. So here in Vermont, though, when, when Entergy bought Vermont Yankee, in 2000 and, uh, um, 2002, they, had, they signed an agreement where they would abide by the state law and essentially ask the state for permission to continue to operate. And last year, in 2010, the state declined to give them permission. So here in Vermont, we, the state says you cannot run, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission says you can run. And of course, uh, just yesterday, the nuclear regulatory, I mean, sorry, Entergy um, sued the state of Vermont saying that we had no authority to, uh, to shut them down. So that's Vermont Yankee. We're, we're uh, close to closing a power plant, um, and it will be tied up in litigation now, and we'll see where it turns out. Indian Point's a little different. Indian Point's a different reactor, um, two reactors, actually, Indian Point 2 and 3. And uh, they're on the Hudson River in New York State. And they have um, um, uh, different problems. Th their problem is that they consume an enormous amount of river water. 